Hello everyone. In the last session, we discussed about the armature winding. So in the armature winding, generally we have some. We discussed about the lap winding. So in this lap winding, we have some important thing that is the first coil is represents with it continues and end with one dash, and the second coil is represents with two, and it is end with the two dash, and third coil is represented here end with the three dash. Okay. so this is about the lap winding next we will entering into the next is the wave winding look at here this is the wave winding so just observe here finishing end of the first coil so just observe here so this is the coil just observe this coil for example if you take this is the coil one then you can take this is flows and it will be finished here you can take this is the one dash this is the beginning end and this is the finishing end yeah finishing end of the first coil is connected to the beginning end of the second coil just look at here here beginning end of the second coil this is the second coil just observe this is the first coil and this is the second coil this same thing so if you take this is the two and this will be the two dash this will be two and this will be the two dash so this is the second coil starting coil the most important thing is here second coil and the most important thing is here under the adjacent similar pole just look at here it is the adjacent similar pole this is the first coil will be first coil and first side first coil beginning end and sec first coil ending end will be another pole this is the one pole and this is the one pole and second coil is in another pole same as the third coil is also the another pole so third coil is also the another pole but if you observe the lamp winding in the lamp winding itself the first coil will be in this and second will be second pole and the next and the second thing the second coil will be in the same pole and will be the same pole like that it follows if it has a two poles but in case of the wave winding if we are using the two poles only it doesn't have this we have the two poles that will be like this if you using the two poles only it will be like this connection okay here the first coil beginning end will be connected to the second coil ending end of the first coil will be connected to the beginning end of the second coil and that will be but if you observe here first coil having the separate poles and second coil also having the separate poles that is the thing so that's why this adjacent pole is the important thing adjacent pole is the important thing so that is the major difference between the lap winding and the wave winding so if you observe the diagrams you will understand very easily so we have one important thing that is the lap winding is the complete winding we can name it it is a complete winding and here the wave winding is the incomplete winding lap winding is the complete winding and the wave winding is the incomplete winding why just observe here here if you observe the lap winding lap winding follows all the commutator segments these are called the commutator segments and it will completely occupy the complete poles like this but if you observe here the lot of commutator segments will be empty the top commutator segments will be the empty so it will be empty means so these are not the complete winding so that's why the lap winding is the complete winding and the wave winding is the incomplete winding okay so this is about the lap winding and the wave winding okay so in order to understand lap winding and wave winding very easily just we will uh, take an example that is just look at here the the example is a four pole dc machine we have number of poles that machine have the number of poles is the 4 yeah 
with total number of turns is 100. It has only number of turns. Complete number of turns is the 100. And here given EMF per turn is the 10. EMF per turn is the 10. Okay. All right. And if it is connected in lap winding, how it behaves? If it is connected in lap winding, how it behaves the important thing. Just observe here, this is the armature. This is the armature winding. The connection is like this. So generally, in case of lap winding, we should, the important thing is the number of parallel paths. How many parallel paths it should have? The number of parallel paths will be represented with A. That is the P. So here A equal number of poles. That is the 4. So you should have the number of parallel paths has 4. So that's why we have number of turns 100. I can divide these number of turns into 4 categories. This is the 1. This is the 1. This is the 1. This is the 1. That means we have 100 turns. So it consisting of the it consisting of the 25 turns and it consisting of the 25 turns and consisting of the 25 turns it consisting of the 25 turns why it must and should have number of parallel paths only the four otherwise it is not possible okay and the thing is he given emf per turn is 10 emf per turn is 10 so so we can write so that's why EMF in one parallel path EMF generated in in so we can write the generated no problem EMF generated in one parallel path we can write the EMF generated is we can take it as a EG is like this what is the value so we have 25 turns and 25 turns so generally how can we write emf per turn emf per turn by into number of turns okay so for that emf per turn is 10 and number of turn is the 25 therefore the total generated emf will be the 250 so in this in the every in the every thing the emf generated is you can take it as the 250 volts and same 250 volts generated here 250 volts here also same and here also same all the parallel paths having the same 250 volts 25 turns and 250 volts okay yeah and so and the generated for example for example just assume that just assume that each parallel path having a current is 10 amps now for example so the requirement load the load requirement is this is connected to load so everything is should be connected to the load should be connected to the load so this load value is for example the requirement of the armature current as load current is 40 amps for example required 40 amps so these same parallel paths are same that's why the parallel path one will generate 10 amps and it will generate 10 amps and it will generate 10 amps and it will generate 10 amps so the complete current is the 40 amps that is in the each parallel path it will generate the 10 amps it will generate the 10 amps so so from this from this the total current generated by the armature is 40 amps and total emf generated in this is the 250 volts 250 volts okay so from this the total power generated from armatures armature circuit total power generated in armature circuit armature circuit that is power equal to generated emf into armature current 
so generated emf is 250 volts and the total is the 40 amps 250 volts and 40 amps so by doing this we will get we will get 10 kilowatts how it is 25 4 is 100 and 100 into 100 yeah so we will get the 25 4 is 100 and we have already 2 so 10,000 watts are 10 kilowatts 10,000 watts are 10 kilowatts okay yeah so whenever this machine so but the important thing is this current will be depends on load that is a very important thing this current will be depends on load so armature current depends on load major current will be depends on load but the emf generated will be depends on the number of turns and the number of parallel paths number of parallel paths okay so this is about when a particular machine having particular poles particular poles that should be that should be this much of rating okay so this is about the wave winding and an example of lab winding okay i hope all of you understand the session thank you